Welcome to How You Live It, a transformative podcast featuring best selling author, inspirational speaker, and minister, Dr. Rick Rigsby. And now, Dr. Rick. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to continue discussing a topic recently introduced, and that topic is the value of failure. In an earlier podcast, I mentioned that we don't talk positively enough about failure. We talk outcomes, we talk results, we talk success. And while success is important to emphasize, remember this, there is no sustained success without failure. Failure is the trademark of success. When you fail, when you hit a wall, you're left with a choice. Do I acknowledge the failure and grow, or do I ignore the failure and decline? Anything that forces you to be honest with yourself will compel you to improve. You'll place a demand upon yourself to get better. Regardless of the endeavor, our best learning often comes at the expense of difficult, challenging times. Former UCLA basketball coach John Wooden was correct when he stated that failure is never fatal. You see, failure can present opportunities of a lifetime, the opportunity to learn, the opportunity to grow. I love Dr. James Flynn's theory of capitalization. The psychologist argues that capitalization is the rate at which we maximize our human capital potential, both from a societal and individual perspective. In other words, tremendous growth is not a birthright. Growth is not the exclusive property of the gifted or even the most talented. Growth is earned by those who learn to exploit their talents more than their peers. And how do we exploit those talents? How do we exploit that potential? By having the courage to expose our weaknesses, by displaying the tenacity to turn weakness into strength. As a result, failure becomes the incubator for growth. Say it again, Coach Wooden. Failure is never fatal. It's courage that counts. This notion of pushing through failure, learning from setbacks, not allowing them to crush you, is powerful. Best-selling author John Maxwell wrote an entire book about this power. The book is titled Failing Forward. I highly recommend this read. Dr. Maxwell believes that leaders ought to make failure their friend. He said, it's not a question of if I fail, but when I fail, and then how do I respond? I love what Dr. Maxwell said. Listen to this quote. When dealing with failure, achievers have short memories. They quickly forget the negative emotions of setbacks and press forward resiliently. You learn and you move on, end quote. I see that example when I watch those rare athletes, those who practice amnesia. They'll miss a layup. Their golf shot will go into the water. They'll fumble the football on the goal line. Then suddenly they flip a switch, momentary disappointment, and then on to the next play. Maxwell argues that by looking at the way achievers approach negative experiences can teach us how to fail forward rather than failing backwards. As an example, he challenges readers to shift from failing backward to failing forward, from blaming others to taking responsibility, from repeating the same mistake to learning from each mistake, from expecting never to fail to knowing failure is part of the process, from being limited by past mistakes to taking new risks, from quitting to persevering. Executive coach Robin Sharma adds this, if we choose correctly, Failure can be fuel for success. Sharma states that failure is the price of greatness. Adversity is the price of ambition. And we ought fail faster. I'd never heard that before. Sharma says we ought fail faster. Listen to this quote. There can be no success without failure. Just part of the process. The companies and people who have reached the heights of success are the same ones who have failed the most. You need to fail to win. And the faster you fail, the more quickly you'll learn precisely what you need to do to win, end quote. Friends, remember this. Failure means that you failed at something. It does not mean 
you're a failure. Change your thinking. Failure is actually a setup for success. Remember, great people are not defined by their successes, but by how they bounce back from failure. One of my favorite books is by Napoleon Hill. It's titled Think and Grow Rich. It ought be titled Don't Quit. It ought be titled Keep Standing. Listen to this quote from Hill. Most great people have attained their greatest success just one step beyond their greatest failure. Such a statement ought challenge colleges and universities to reassess curriculum. Such a statement ought encourage organizations to re-examine policies and procedures and ask, are we making space for failure? With a growth mindset, the lessons failure can teach us are seismic. From resilience to steadfastness to tenacity to determination and grit. Friends, nothing has the power to impact our ability to achieve at high levels like failure. Consider working into your day a simple process designed to help you value failure by turning it into sustained growth. I call the process PMI, Purposeful, Meaningful, Intentional Actions. First, Purposeful. My purpose every day is to grow. Second, meaningful. To grow means adjustments have to be made. Often adjustments that are uncomfortable and disruptive, but they are meaningful parts of the growth process. Remember, if there is no pain, you're probably not growing. Remember the words of Benjamin Franklin, the things which hurt instruct. When my actions become meaningful, I will welcome discomfort and disruption and see them as necessary for growth. And third, intentional. When I make a mistake, I must acknowledge the mistake, not blame others. I must evaluate that mistake, not excuse it. I must become intentional about this on a daily basis. Attack each failure with the thought of discovering what the coaching point contained within will be. In other words, when we face a setback, become purposeful in your desire to grow from it. Make meaningful, although uncomfortable, decisions. Be intentional. Acknowledge the mistake. Don't blame. Don't make excuses. There are so many growth points, so many hidden gems inside of each and every failure. Napoleon Hill said it best. Listen to this quote. Every negative event contains within it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. Wow. Speaking of Napoleon Hill, let me close with one of my favorite stories from his book, Think and Grow Rich. The story is titled, Three Feet from Goal. It's one of my absolute favorite stories. Hill argued that one of the most common causes of failure is quitting when overtaken by temporary defeat. And then he related this story. The uncle of R.U. Darby, was caught by gold fever during the gold rush days in the 19th century. The uncle staked a claim and with a pick and shovel went to work. Following weeks of labor, the uncle discovered the shining ore. The uncle covered up the mine, retraced his footsteps back to his home in Maryland, told relatives and a few friends about the strike. He then collected funds from friends for the needed machinery and had the machinery shipped out to the mining site in Colorado. The uncle and his nephew Darby went back to work. After mining that first car of ore and shipping it to the smelter, it appeared that the uncle had one of the richest mines in Colorado. So they started digging again, now with all of this equipment. But as they commenced to drilling, nothing. They hit nothing. They drilled and drilled and drilled. But the vein of gold ore disappeared. They kept drilling for a while, but then they decided to quit. They sold the machinery to a junk man for a few hundred dollars and took a train back home to Maryland. However, the junk dealer consulted with a mining engineer who said the project had failed because the uncle and Darby were not familiar with fault lines. The engineer's calculations showed that the vein would be found just three feet from where the Darbys had stopped drilling. Oh, by the way, the junk man made millions. Why? Because he knew enough to seek help before giving up. 
It took Darby years to pay people back for loaning all that money to he and his uncle for that equipment. However, years later, Darby recouped his losses many times over. He learned from his failures. Listen to this. Darby discovered that desire can be transmuted into gold. He made this discovery after he began selling life insurance. He never forgot that lesson learned while mining for gold with his uncle when they stopped drilling just three feet from gold. And for the rest of his life, Darby would speak this as his personal motto. I will never stop because men say no. I will never stop because men say no. As a result, Darby made millions selling life insurance and refusing to take no for an answer. Coaching point. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep drilling. Keep growing. Keep learning. Well, friends, this story is very personal to me. I first read this story 26 years ago, and I agree with Napoleon Hill when he said, one of the most common causes of failure is quitting when overtaken by temporary defeat. I first read this 26 years ago. It was back in 1996 that I almost quit on life. That was the year my first wife, Trina, lost the six-year battle with breast cancer. At the time, this was more than merely a temporary defeat. Trina's passing represented the end of life as we knew it. I was only 40 years old. My sons were very young. Our hearts were broken. Grief and despair filled our once joyful home. Loneliness and profound sadness were constant companions. This was no temporary defeat. This represented the end of our lives. Two things changed my perspective. First, my faith in God. My decision to trust Him despite my discomfort, despite my pain. My grief would turn to anger. For a while, I was even angry with God. But I talked to Him a lot, and I listened a lot with my spirit. I did a lot of listening. A lot of things I didn't want to hear. But you know what I remember? God never left my side. I discovered that I'd never been closer to God in my life than during those times of great grief and despair. And I would eventually confess that while I still had many, many questions unanswered, I was eventually able to say, it is well with my soul. Second, my perspective changed due to the wisdom of the wisest man I've ever met in my life, my daddy, a third grade dropout. I can remember as if it was yesterday, standing in front of the casket in the funeral home, holding the hands of my two little boys. And I looked at my father and I said, Dad, I've lost hope. And he said, Son, you can't lose something God gave you. You haven't lost hope. You've lost perspective. Now, son, just stand. I want to encourage those of you going through a difficult season to keep standing. Just stand. It is amazing the power that you can gain by simply standing and saying, despite everything happening, I'm not going to quit. Friend, if you're going through a tough time right now, keep standing. You know what is also amazing? How time reshapes perspective. 26 years ago, my father simply told me to stand. Today, as I look back on the worst days of my life, they were temporary. In fact, it was a temporary season. It was a temporary defeat. It was a defeat that me and my boys survived. Not that you completely get over the death of a spouse or a child or a relative or a parent. Not that there are no lasting repercussions. But in reality, the season was, in fact, temporary and not the end of our lives. Lessons learned? Huh. How much time do we have? But here's the biggest lesson. For some of you listening, you may be experiencing a very difficult season, a season that is filled with pain. You might be going through the worst of times, a divorce, bankruptcy, sickness, the loss of a parent, 
a spouse, or a child. The biggest lesson I learned is one that I continue to practice this very day. It's one that I speak about all over the world. It's one that changed my life and strengthens me daily. The lesson, keep standing. Don't quit. Don't make a lifelong decision over a temporary circumstance. Just keep standing no matter what. No matter how difficult the hour, keep standing. No matter how challenging the day, no matter how badly you want to give up, keep standing. Napoleon Hill said, one of the most common causes of failure, quitting when overtaken by temporary defeat. What I failed to realize during that season 26 years ago was that seasons are temporary, that failure is never fatal. What I have since learned over and over again is that if I keep standing, victory is often just a few feet away. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Rick asking the most important question I can ask. How you living? Are you ready to make an impact in your world right now? Do you want to stop existing and start living your best life right now? Dr. Rick wants to give you the first chapter of his best-selling book, Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout, absolutely free. Just go to www.rickrigsby.com forward slash free gift to get the print or audiobook right now. This is the podcastfactory.com.